Hobie Doo, it's everyone's favorite boomer and uh, vintage lens enthusiast. I have three 28 millimeter f2.8 full frame vintage film error lenses. And we're going to look at the Canon FD first. This is the FD mount. There's two FD mounts. This is the new FD mount. And the old FD mount had a uh, a silver ring here. And you would put this red dot on the camera and you would turn the silver ring. Whereas the new ones, you put the red dot on the camera and you change the whole, uh, rotate the whole lens. Uh, let's look at some of the features of this lens. First, you may notice that it's uh, it looks real nice and new and it's all plastic but it looks like metal plastic. You have to touch it to feel like it's plastic and it's extremely lightweight compared to the others. Uh, notice how clean uh, the numerals are and engraving. Uh, it stops down to F22. The closest focusing is uh, uh, less than 0.3 meters, which is pretty cool. Uh, notice that the wide depth of field, if you stop down to F22, you could go from infinity all the way to uh, 0.6 meters. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I bought this lens uh, back in the uh, 90s. So this is 2022. I had it like 30 plus years. Plus they stopped making them in 1987 anyway. I happened to come by an AE-1 program and uh, I took quite a number of, of pictures with this lens. But it set fallow for many years until uh, I got a, this uh, Sony ICLE 5000 uh, mirrorless camera. The next lens is the Pentax M f2.8 and it's also 28 millimeter. Um, notice it says SMC which means super multi-coated. It came out uh, completely. Uh, this is all metal except for this rubber ring. It's all metal. You can't, can't beat that. And uh, Although it looks smaller, it feels slightly heavier. Just slightly. The only plastic things is this dot and the rubber ring. This lens also stops down to f22. Notice that the focusing ring turns in the opposite direction. It also focuses down slightly past 0.3 meters. Uh, and so you get the same depth of field really as the other one. I bought this for uh, a, S, uh, a K1000, and I took a whole lot of pictures with this lens. It's one of my favorite lenses. And it's sat fellow for many years until I got this uh, mirrorless camera. This is a Sears 28 2.8. Notice it says MC. That means multi-coated. I don't think it's multi-coated. I th it might maybe only one surface is multi-coated, but the rest are probably just coated. Uh, this is an all-metal lens, except for uh, the rubber ring. Everything else seems like it's made out of metal. It's a M42 screw mount. Uh, I was using this on a Pentax SP500, which is a film camera. It's made in Japan. How about that? Though all these lenses are made in Japan, but some of these aftermarkets could be made anywhere. Korea, Singapore, uh, you name it, they could be uh, anywhere. Uh, this lens seems to be pretty big in the front. Let's look at this one. Eh, slightly bigger, I think. But what does that mean? Nothing. That's just the design. Um, I've used this a little bit, but this is another lens that said fallow for many years until I got this camera. I like the Pentax the best for some reason. It has very neutral color. It has a, it's not high contrast, but it's got a, a, a large range of contrast. This has a vibrant colors. The, the Canon has vibrant colors and it's sort of a, a contrasty lens. Uh, and uh, it has nice resolution too. This lens under ideal conditions performs really well, but it suffers from flare. So you got to use this 
in a low contrast situation where there's no bright lights uh, to uh, mess with it. So these three lenses, what we're going to do is we're going to mount them on this very same camera that I'm using to take pictures of them. And um, we're first going to do the Canon, then we're going to do the Pentax, then we're going to Sears, and we're going to see uh, if it's useful for some sort of uh, blogging or vlogging. Now these are wide angle, even on uh, this uh, camera, they're, they, they're equivalent to a, a 50 millimeter, or just about. Uh, so uh, you could get a, a pretty good head and shoulders and maybe down to your hips, even when you're sitting down. Uh, and that's the way I like to shoot. And uh, we're going to get some backgrounds and see how it all works out. Well, I'm going to set each lens at a 5.6 and I'm going to uh, go to uh, ISO 640 and I'm going to turn the, uh, uh, the saturation and the contrast down, but I'm going to turn the sharpness all the way up. And then we'll just compare them all and see uh, if there's any real difference. Real world difference, if you want to shoot like a vlog, which one could you get? Either, one, either of these lenses, in perfect condition today, like new, you could probably get for 50 bucks. I mean, these aren't like uh, uh, legendary lenses, well, because they were mass produced. If any one is legendary, it's this one. This one is legendary. They, Pentax really nailed it with this guy. But still, uh, brand new, perfect condition, 50 bucks. Ooby doo. This is the Canon 28mm f2.8, uh, the new FD mount. I'm shooting at a 640, 125th of a second. Uh, I'm in uh, cool white fluorescent mode and uh, I'm at 5.6. So uh, this is a, a big uh, living room I have and I have some lights on and uh, we'll see what this looks like. And my, my cat's keeping me company too. So uh, is it a good uh, blogging vlog lens? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, could it make you Joe Rogaine or uh, Russell Brand or uh, Lex Fridman? I don't know. Uh, certainly not me. I don't think it would make me those people. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, study this lens for a minute and then I'm going to switch over to the Pentax uh, 28 2.8 and then the Sears 28 2.8 under exact same conditions and at the exact same settings. And then uh, we'll look at it, one, two, three and see if there's any difference. Now, I paid for like 50 bucks for this lens. I paid 50 bucks for this um, sometime in the 90s, probably the mid to late 90s. Uh, I got it at a, at a real camera store. I used to have real camera stores. And so uh, this lens has been in my possession for 30 years. And like I said before, they stopped making them in 87. So it has to be uh, older than that. So uh, uh, I've used it uh, with film and um, on a... 35 millimeter uh, film camera. This is really a wide angle lens. It's wide. It has that wide angle perspective where uh, you know uh, the lens, the lines seem to meet at infinity. And uh, the, but it's not a fisheye lens. Straight eye, straight lines remain straight. So that's what's good about it. And it always, uh, you know, film sucked. I hate to say it, but it was grainy. It had limited contrast. Uh, uh, some film had better colors. I like slide film. I always got the best results with slides. But, um, you know, color negative, eh. You know, until they came out with the Royal Emulsions, like the Royal 800 and 1000, uh, you know, it was just, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm glad we came out with digital. And this is the ICE, ICLE 5000, Sony uh, mirrorless camera, excellent camera for vlogging because right now it has a flip up screen and I can sort of see what's happening on the screen even though I'm probably uh, oh five feet away from it. So let's get right to it and we'll switch over to the, uh, the Pentax right now. Ooby doo it's me again 
And now we're using the Pentax M 28mm f2.8 under the same exact conditions. I set it at 5.6, um, about 5 feet away or so. Same exact lighting conditions, same camera settings. I saw uh, 640, 125th of a second for a movie shutter. Uh, so, uh, what's the difference between the Canon and this under this situation? Uh, probably very little, I would think. Now, uh, I paid probably 50 bucks for this lens, and I bought it at a local camera store when I used to have local camera stores. And uh, I bought this back in the, the 80s with a K1000, and uh, the late 80s, you know, 80, something like that. And I had it for many, many years. Of course, it was used when I bought it, and it was older than that. I guess you can look up on a, a lens serial number database and find out what it, approximately when it was manufactured. Uh, I like this on digital cameras because it has a very uh, even contrast. It's not contrasty, but it has a wide range of contrasts. Uh, the saturation on this lens seems somewhat more subdued. Uh, and movies are different, but I'm talking about still pictures. Uh, it works great when I'm doing panorama mode because it seems to have absolutely no distortion at all. That's why I like this lens. Uh, I've got built deep into panorama modes. And uh, it's got excellent resolution. So if you want to zoom up on something, you can check it out. Uh, it's a real sleeper lens. Uh, Pentax made a whole bunch of really nice lenses. Their prime lenses are outstanding. They're 50 millimeters, they're 28 millimeters. Uh, I don't have any other, really, other lenses. Uh, I have a, a zoom lens, a uh, more modern zoom lens. It's all plastic and everything. This is all metal, except for a little uh, white plastic button, and the focusing ring is like rubber. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the uh, Sears, and then I'll round out uh, what's about with the... Uh, Vintage uh, 28 millimeters from the film era. What we do, this is the Sears MC, stands for multi coated, 28 millimeter f2.8, it's an M42 screw mount lens, it's on the Sony ICLE 5000, and it's got the same settings as before. Uh, you know, this is interesting. You know, M42 uh, was a de facto standard for a long time. And then uh, each manufacturer decided to make their own unique uh, lens mount. Canon had FD. Uh, Pentax went with the K mount. Uh, there's some other brands like Mamiya Seeker had their own. I think Fuji might have had their own. Uh, of course, Nikon had the F mount. And... Uh, you couldn't mix and match. If you were a Canon guy and you had a camera, Canon camera, you were stuck with Canon lenses. There weren't any cross uh, adapters back then because the, uh, the mounting flange to the film plane were all different on each one, the back focus, they call it. So uh, you really couldn't mix and match. And then, uh, uh, let's say I'm a, I was a Canon guy. Even uh, when the digital came out. In the early days of digital, it was the same thing. They went from uh, their film mode into the digital mode, and they carried over uh, a, a lot of their legacy uh, ideas, like uh, the lens mounts. Uh, Canon stuck with the EOS. Uh, Pentax stuck with the K. Um, and then, uh, well, Sony, uh, many years later, came out with their... Uh, their necks or E-mount lenses. So, uh, and, and Nikon uh, stuck with their F. And then what they did is they just uh, added autofocus to it, that's all. Uh, so now, with, with these, uh, these mirrorless cameras, and everyone's got mirrorless cameras now, uh, you could get adapters for them to put any lens on any camera now, pretty much. And uh, say, say, take like Nikon. Nikon went from the F to the Z mount, and then uh, they made their own FTZ adapter, 
but it wouldn't autofocus. <laughs> you know, what's the sense of that? It would do everything else, like uh, the auto exposure and all that, but they wouldn't autofocus. And everyone said, what's up with that? But some aftermarket people, Fringer, made this Canon to Z mount adapter so you could stick any Canon EOS lens on uh, a Nikon Z camera, and it did everything. It did autofocus, uh, it, it, it took in all the EXIF information, like if you had a zoom lens, it would port in what zoom you were at, as, as well as what the maximum aperture is and the current aperture is. So, you know, uh, why didn't Nikon do that with their own lenses? I don't know. Uh, but that's just, you know, my philosophy. My look at the, the philosophy of uh, Japanese camera manufacturers. So, uh, this lens, even you come at this and then it's probably brand new for 25 bucks, like new 25 bucks. Uh, so there's no need to buy like a junky lens, you know, like a, a, a bargain lens or a, a good lens. You always go for very good or excellent or like new. Now, uh, the prices you use lens do vary and we're in 2022, we're in some inflationary cycle. But the, even then, you'll see like all of a sudden the lenses cost a lot and if you wait six weeks, the lenses aren't cost as much. It's like sometimes the lens becomes hot, and everyone wants this lens for some reason, and then all the other lenses are cheaper. Now, you know, more modern lenses that are more upscale, well, even used are going to cost more. Say like a decent modern lens costs 600 bucks. well, you could probably get that same one and use market in excellent condition for 300 bucks, and I've done that many times, many times. But then, you know, uh, I came up at being a boomer. I came up through the film era, and uh, a lot of these lenses were, you know, because uh, you say uh, people were making less money back then, you couldn't even touch them, you know, most people. And now they're so uh, even, uh, uh, they're so affordable. And even uh, some lenses are uh, legendary lenses, are affordable. Uh, Canon, uh, they had their FD line and they poured them to the EOS with the same optical formula. And then uh, for many years they were fallow and dirt cheap. And then all of a sudden it became a thing and the prices went up. But everyone who, who wanted one got one and the prices came down. And now only some of them were expensive and some of them are inexpensive. And you could get like real L lenses from the FD era, like for cheap, like one third of what the cost is of a modern L lens, and so it's a way to go. And you know, if you've got one of these Sony cameras, or you got a Z camera, or anything Canon, I think they have their M camera now, and you can all get adapters, and you can uh, cherry pick everyone's line from the vintage era, like, oh yeah, this is the best macro, this is the best wide angle, this is the best fisheye, this is the best uh, medium zoom, you know, this is the best ultra fast, and you can have all these lenses uh, from different manufacturers and run it on one camera. So even though I used to be uh, a Canon guy, I'm an everything guy now. You know, it's like, well, you know, so th this lens is good, that lens is good. You know, look at this camera, look at that camera. You know, and uh, that's the way it's been now. And it's even more exciting and fun and challenging now than before just to be stuck. I'm a Canon guy, I'm a Nikon guy, you know, or whatever. So it's, uh, it, the things went in the right direction in photography, I think.